I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an optimist here and not say that I'm going to say repetitive things. I'm going to uh, allude to some things that were said that from Sophie and the product team when it comes to automation and hopefully address some of the concerns that some people have about full automation. Some of the concerns. Uh, but yeah, so this presentation is called Running on Autopilot. And, as Sophie mentioned, I was here in 2018. I don't know how many double speakers you have, how many people that come back. I, just one, okay. So my, my topic then was change management. I was focusing in on implementing a PluNet system from the beginning and the change that is needed within an organization to implement technology. And four years ago, I started touching upon what automation could do using PluNet but barely scratch the surface. So what I want to do here is really dive down that rabbit hole of automation with PluNet and what is possible for any company of any size, any LSP. It doesn't have to be just the large LSPs that are automating here. In fact, the smaller ones will see incredible value from doing automation as well. A lot's changed in four years. A lot has changed in two years. Less change in the last year. And it's, it's required us to rethink how we're solving our customers' challenges. We've always seen timeliness and price pressure. We've seen these things for the last 20 plus years. But really the last two years made us rethink of what was possible and what we need to do to get to the next level. So the first question is, what the heck is autopilot? I'll cover that. Next after that, I want to discuss process mapping. I'm a process guy. My, my, my job title is process and technology, not just technology. So understanding process interactions and what that means for technology implementation and automation. I'm going to ch uh, chat about automation levels. Now, Sophie had it broken down into three easy levels. I'm going to complicate things by making it six. You'll have six levels of automation to look at there. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually do the, the PluNet sales team a favor. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do some sales work for them. I'm not expecting any commissions here, but I'm going to do some sales work. I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about all the different PluNet modules, how they play with each other, and how you can use them to get to different levels of automation. That's it. That's it. I just, I, you just automated PluNet right there. Okay. I'm not going to read, I'm not the type of person that just reads a PowerPoint, uh, and, and sometimes that's to my detriment because I can go on tangents here. So it's on here on screen for you to read if you want to. But a couple key, key takeaways is the goal of an autopilot solution is not to replace a human operator. It's not the, the, the job of it. It's to allow the human operator to focus in on more critical tasks. You want to take away the repetitive tasks. Think of a, a, a pilot. You definitely don't want a pilot not flying the plane. You want the pilot there. Focusing in on the critical tasks. What's happening in the weather? How do I need to adjust things in this plane to make sure that we're all safe and that, that the plane is going to fly as smooth as possible? So we're not replacing humans. <laughs> That's a key statement, right? Uh, I've, I've spoken at a few different events virtually the last few years and, and talked about the harmony between process automation, AI, and HI. Does anyone know what HI is? Human intelligence. That's right. It's very important. You can't have automation. You can't have AI without humans. It's our experiences, our knowledge. It's our understanding, our critical thinking ability that makes technology work the way that it needs to. My focus today is, is going to be on process automation, not AI. As Sophie mentioned, they are two different things. There's overlap, but I really want to focus in on process automation. The understanding of inputs and outputs, that's what processes are. It's a series of inputs and outputs. The output of one process becomes the input to the next process. And if you map those properly, that is your first step in great automation. It's actually the key concept to the autopilot program that we put in place at CQ Fluency. Because it's not just, uh, 
it's not just a one-off. It's, it's a methodology. It has to be part of your, your core processes, right? When you think about technology implementation, you have to think, where do we want to be not just now, but in the future, and come up with a roadmap, a plan of how to get there. And that's what CQ Autopilot was for us, and I'm going to share some of that with you today. Uh, process mapping, if you don't know, is, is a technique of pretty much just writing down the whole process, step by step, of how things uh, connect with each other. It's, it's usually a workflow map or a diagram that shows the ins and outs. And if you think, if you've ever played with BlueNet, if you've ever seen how the workflow section of BlueNet works, that's exactly what you're doing. Doing it on paper first, saying here's what my humans are doing today, how can I use jobs in BlueNet to replicate this, and where are those areas that I can focus in on to remove humans from the process. So here's an example of a process map that uses the CQ autopilot methodology. And it starts with the source document and the customer entry. I'm glad that you brought that up. because You're right. If you draw risks or write down all the risks of a project, that entry point is one of the biggest risks. If they upload the wrong file, if they choose the long, wrong language pair, that just ruins a lot of things. So to Sophie's point and to the point that we've made about full automation, it has to be a perfect storm of specifications. Everything has to be right. It's got to be a consistent file type. It's got to be a consistent language pairs. Or so, so, you, know, you can have checks and balances in there, too. Uh, who, who's, who's the text module expert, Plunet? Anyone? I forget who it is. If you're using text modules and properties, you can put checks and balances in place to protect yourself, to a degree, of customers doing things incorrectly from the get-go. Um, so imagine that this document right here, this, this, this source document I'm talking about, is a small document, a, a, min, a minimum job, right? You got about two to three hours to get it back to the customer. Who is the most important person in the process, if you only have two to three hours, that you need to maximize their time on the project? It's the translator. They're the one that, that, that is the most critical person of this process. Everything else around that you need to try to find a way to reduce the cycle times on what that's taking in order to give the translator the most time of that truncated TAT, right? So uh, in, the, in this process flow right here, timeliness is, is like the, cre uh, the key uh, critical KPI, right? That's the critical one for the customer. So imagine it's a, a regulatory submission or there's a specific timeline that this customer has to get this document to. So timeliness is the number one KPI here. What about quality, though? Well, I just said it's for a regulatory submission, so you know that quality has to be good as well. What is the third, if you know the triangle, what is the third key driver that we need to be aware of? Cost. It's a small document. You're not going to be able to charge much for it, too. So I have just, I have just created a nightmare scenario for you. <laughs> How do you solve for it? Well, in the source document, uh, you have multiple options of getting this to your system. You've got the customer, customer portal. Your customers use the portal. They, they upload the file. They do the submission. Uh, you have event manager and you have API, which I'll talk about a little bit more in depth later. So you get the document. The next step of it is you have a workflow on the back end. And if you're using automation manager, you're doing that automatic convert from request to order. Think about that right there. How many requests do you get into your system that a human then has to convert request to order, convert request to quote. Multiply that, right? Like think about the button clicks and the time you're spending just doing that, and you'll see the ROI right there on having Automation Manager automatically converting your requests into orders and quotes. You can add into your workflows also file prep, scripts. I know we were talking about scripts helped you out. Scripts help me out all the time. And using something like Application Manager allows you to execute scripts. So again, thinking of fail-safes, right? Thinking of all the things that someone could do wrong on a project, and again, it's all rule-based, and you're going to miss some. Trust me, I know. Uh, but you can start to think about how you can mitigate some of those risks using a script-based uh, component as part of your workflow. CAD integrations, yes, I could not live without my CAD integration. 
Uh, there's so much power behind the CAD integration and what it can do from automatic analysis, uh, pre-translation, machine translation application, connecting up to glossaries, turn bases, filters. Uh, it's, it's endless, right? And that could all be part of your workflow right there. And then additional fun stuff you can do with the API. And you don't know how excited I am about the REST API. I was not going to ask the question to Rosa about when it's going to be available, but I am super excited about that, just so you know. Moved on to your linguistic steps. Again, the most important part of this process right here. Maximizing the time that your translators have to either translate content or post edit or review, whatever it is. And then using some more automated QA steps. You can have automated QA checkers built within uh, your, your integration with your CAT tool. You can use an automated job to generate a QA report within Plunet. You can do target file exports right from your system. So, little dotted line over here. If you wanted then, once you've now got this uh, raw, the, the source file back, the, the source format back, your Word doc is back through the system. You can route it for a, a, a review, a QA review of, of that format, or automatic delivery to your customer. This is the autopilot methodology. It's not going to be used on every single project. It's, it's, it's flexible, but the key components are the same. Consistency, standardization of a source document, and entry, defined workflow that's going to be suited for your project and project type, maximizing the linguistic time on the project, and then automating client delivery, reduces risks as well, and gives you those great timestamps. If we talked about metrics, and, and, and I'm a big data visualization guy, I've got a team of people dedicated just to data visualization uh, at, at our company. You get those timestamps of knowing how you're performing with those, those timeliness and KPIs, right? All right, so moving on to a quick story. I'm a, I'm a storyteller, I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's gonna, I'm gonna go off the rails very soon here and I apologize, but uh, how did this help us at CQ? And I have lots, and, and it's funny, you brought up um, the, the pandemic and, and one of our biggest customers, uh, not gonna name names, but you can go to our website and see a case study on it, uh, was a key player in the development of the vaccine that has gotten us here today. So uh, we, we played, uh, I feel, you know, a minor role, but it was great to work on some of the content that was uh, part of that process. Same thing, short turnaround times, high quality, and huge stakes. Uh, so we use that, that, that methodology to work on that project. But the project I'm gonna tell you about is taking the impossible and making it possible. And I think that's what we need to get to now, right? We need to understand that what our thoughts of, of possibilities in the translation world are changing. Uh, we're we're, we're going to you know, feel the pressure from a lot of our competitors out there, we know that, of, of what they can say they can do. But what we want to do is actually be able to do it, right? Uh, so the case study I have, a customer came to us with 9,400 PDF files. And for those of you that knew, deal with PDFs, you know, fun. Right? Uh, it was roughly 6.5 million words, uh, 110,000 pages. So I mean, it was a lot of content. How many weeks do you think they gave us or asked us for? It's three, three. So one, one whew, brutal, but three. Yeah, so they gave us three weeks. Uh, they went to two other LSPs and asked them, what's the fastest you can do? LSP number one said eight weeks. LSP number two said six weeks. So they, they were asking us to do it in pretty much half the time that any other LSP said they could do it in. Uh, and, and my first reaction was like, yeah, we can do it. Because <laughs> that's my first reaction to everything. Yeah, we can do it. I, I have, I have you know, my, my, my phone has more technology than, than astronauts got to the moon with. So I, I'm, I'm sure that we can do this project. So I sat down with our vice president of production and, and the first thing we did was we mapped the process. We wrote down the risks. We understood what was at stake here. How could we maximize the time in, that the translator needs to do this? Um, long story short, and I know too late, but uh, we delivered before the three weeks. We processed 900 files a day. We broke it down into batches. We were able to process 900 files per day. Uh, saved, the company, uh, saved the customer $280,000 in costs, by the way, as well. We were able to, the, the original quote from their vendor was $1 million to do this project. We were able to save them $280,000. Um, as you can imagine, they were happy. And the quality was great, because what we did was we gave the translators the appropriate time they needed to do their jobs properly, right? 
having the right technology is step one. Understanding how that technology fits into your processes is step two. And harmonizing those together is, is what we're trying to do here today. So again, Sophie talked about automation levels, and I'm gonna complicate things even more, because there is a level zero. There is a level zero, there's no automation. That's, that, that does exist, uh, but I, I was very happy to see the statistics that you showed that most companies are using uh, some kind of business management solution nowadays, that's great. Uh, I don't want to do the back in my day, I've been in this industry a while, and I'm sure some of you as well, are talking about Excel workbooks and, and post you know, cards on, 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 on cork boards and such. So I'm very glad to see where we're at today. Um, okay, before I get into this though, I'd like to ask anyone who works at an LSP that has over 100 employees to stand up. You work in an LSP that has over 100 employees. Stand up, great, thank you. Uh, 50, you, have, you work at an LSP, stay, please stay standing, please, st uh, no, don't sit down yet, I'm, I'm sorry, I know you're all jet lagged and stuff like that, but still, please, 50, okay. Work at an LSP with more than 25 employees, please stand up. 10? 10, 10 employees. Five? Two? That, no, no, stay, please stay stand up. Two? 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 One? One? Okay, uh, I trust if you're still sitting, you don't work at an LSP or you're some kind of like AI sentient being that has yet to pass the Turing test. Uh, but look around the room before you sit down and just realize that all of you can automate to any level that you want to. Thank you, you can sit down. Um, so again, the, the, you know, we, we've covered this concept of full automation and, and what it means, and uh, I have it highlighted as, as level five up here, and we know it's, it's not gonna happen very often, and it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. The 10%, I was very happy to see the 10%. It shouldn't happen that often, because you do need those perfect parameters, those perfect specifications to ensure that nothing's gonna break. Because if it breaks, then it's really bad. Uh, but looking at the other uh, automation, so no automation means you're not using a TMS, you're probably getting files via email, creating folders on your network, saving the your files in the folders, you know, sending out emails to vendors, probably like rewriting an email every single time. If you're doing this, I, please don't, please don't, I'm sorry. Uh, level one means you have taken that step, you've taken that next step to understand that this isn't scalable, this isn't gonna work. So you buy a, a system such as PluNet, and you're starting to use those features that, that are right out of the box. You open up the box, you get that fresh smell, that fresh new PluNet smell, and, and it's, you start using those features, that those, those automatic email templates, uh, the, the RTF templates that you can use to create invoices and stuff. That stuff is huge time savers. And a quick aside, I remember years ago sitting down with a project manager and them opening up an invoice every single time and editing a field in the invoice. And I was like, let me just fix the template for you so you never have to do this again. I, they were doing this on every single invoice. So think about this. They, they produced over 2,000 invoices. And they're changing every single one, every single time. That time adds up. So automation does not have to be this big sweeping change. You don't have to do everything all at once. You can do things in stages. And that's why I like segmenting this out a little bit more of understanding that you've, you're now at least in level one. You're probably going into level two. You might be using some order templates or some item templates or some job templates and so forth in BlueNet. Level three is a further reduction of those repetitive tasks that's really focusing in on workflows, uh, possibly you know, utilizing uh, uh, some, some process jobs and some automate, uh, automated actions within there. And, and this level three and above is kind of, I would, I would say, if you can get 80, 90% of your projects within the level three, level four, that would be great. That's kind of the sweet spot of what you want to try to do. Um, you know, level four, I think you do need that uh, extra commitment. I'll say resources, cost, time, because I, I, you, you, to achieve that, you do need either a dynamic CAD integration or some kind of API integration with another system that's going to allow you for a little bit more hands off. Uh, thinking of even, you know, a lot of you probably don't have customers that use your portal to submit projects and they might be emailing you files or emailing uh, you, you, know, you to use their portal, and that's why like, a solution like Be Lazy is awesome too, because then you can kind of corral all of those in one UI and, 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 and further automate. Um, 
you have a lot of different options of how you can get to the level four. Um, smaller companies, again, tend to have less resources, less time, less money. So a, a few hints, a few suggestions. And, and I, at CQ, when I started, we were, I don't know, 19 people. We're up to about 130 right now. So, I mean, it's, it, it, I've seen kind of some growth. <laughs> so I know what it's like to be the one person that was the SME, and now I have a team of, of, of 12, 13 people that are supporting me to help me uh, look good. And uh, they've all become kind of mini SMEs as well. Find someone who is passionate within your organization about this and make sure they have time, three, four hours, whatever it is. Find, t find the time for that person, because A, it's gonna be good for them, it's gonna be good for their career development and good for their mental well-being to be able to dedicate that, and it's gonna be good for your organization. You're gonna see the ROI in giving that person the few hours a week to focus in on, on this. If you can't, again, if there's one, two people in your organization, or you're a sentient being that can't uh, uh, you know, focus any time and attention on that, uh, there's great tech consultants out there, I know of one who is here today. If, if ask me afterwards, I will point you in the direction if you need to know. Uh, they can help you get you to where you need to be on this journey as well. And uh, to the point I made, not everything has to be automated. You don't go like try to jump from level one to level four or level five right from the get-go. Do your process mapping. Understand maybe the couple of things that bother you the most. Spend your time and energy on that and then you're gonna see that continual improvement of your processes. Um, you know, uh, I, I mentioned it. You've already made the investment if you've bought PlueNet. Why not maximize that investment as much as you can by utilizing a lot of the tools that PlueNet enables you to use to get there? How am I doing on time? I'm almost done, right? Whew, okay. Told you, uh, I'm, I'm going to do some sales work for, uh, for Plunet here. Here are the, the modules. Here are the things I want to talk about in, I don't have much time left, right? Okay. Uh, so I already talked about the out of the box, the Plunet workflows. That's right, again, you open it up, you can put workflows together, you can start automating from day one if you want to. It's awesome. You can plug in those email templates, you can plug in all those things to further automate. Uh, it's, it's great. So that, that, auto, that pretty much gets you to like, Three, right there, by, by not doing anything. Dynamic CAD integration, you know, we use MemoQ. Uh, if you use uh, Travis, if you use MemSource, if you use any of those that have the dynamic CAD integrations. If you're using it in a silo already, look into the investment of connecting it up to your, to, to your PlueNet, right? It's great. Your, 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 your translators can work in MemoQ online or the online, and then they deliver there, and boom, it sinks right up to your PlueNet. It's, it's beautiful, it really is. And then it can kick off some of those more automated jobs. Once they deliver, you can set, okay, now move it on to the next phase or export this job to a, target, a clean target file. You can do all these things right within your workflow. Again, your project managers then spend more time building relationships with your resources. That's key. Because with automation comes that disconnect from, from your resources because you're automating everything. You're using these rounds of jobs or you're using these emails that are automatically happening and you lose that human-to-human that -human connection. So it's important to take that time that they're saving from automation and reinvest that in you know, your vendor community or for their self-learning or self-training. In fact, the, the cool thing is we, st we started a program at CQ. It's called the Tech Turnship. Um, for those of you following me on LinkedIn, you probably saw when I started this program, we had two people in it. This past year, we had 40. And the whole goal was to take people out of their day-to-day -day roles, because we've, we've automated a lot of what, what they're, the you know, tasks that they were doing, and give them the knowledge and know-how of how to do things from a technology standpoint. So we, we taught about machine translation, we taught about process automation, we taught about data visualization, we taught about APIs, REST APIs, and so forth, and we were giving them skills to improve. So again, whatever time is being saved here, People can reinvest. So that is your first step in getting people to embrace technology and automation is to say, we're not here to replace you, we're here to get you to that next level by giving you the opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up here by just covering the last few things here. Automation manager, we've kind of covered it. it, allows you to do all those great things. Application manager, again, if you have a script or, or an application that you want to launch as part of a workflow, Definitely look into that. You can use custom scripts. So if you want to say, is this file a PDF or a Word doc? Yay or nay? 
You can use a script that determines that and then branches off to different things. Again, kind of saving yourself from a customer. Say, say if your customer agreed to always send Word documents to you and your first step in your process is to logic check to make sure that it actually is a Word doc, you can do that in your process. Uh, the, the APIs in the event manager. Event manager, of course, enables uh, connections up to an SFTP or a CMS. A lot of customers would require you to do that and so forth. Okay, uh, I've done enough Plunet sales work. I'm gonna start wrapping up by saying uh, and reminding you that all this type of automation, you can do it, any LSP can do it. Uh, I know that our company is able to do it, then any company <laughs> is able to do it. You can uh, just focus in on what you wanna automate, dedicate your time there, and in no time you'll be running on autopilot just like we are. Thank you so much, appreciate it.